My name's Sarosh Irani. I'm a head of the Oxford Autoimmune Neurology Group, and I work as both a neurologist and a scientist trying to understand more about how the immune system causes a variety of brain diseases. MOG antibody disease occurs when we generate antibodies which react against a protein called MOG. Normally, we generate antibodies to fight off infection, and we all know this in the COVID era. But occasionally, those antibodies turn rogue, and instead of targeting a foreign invader such as COVID, they target our own body. And when that part of our own body is MOG, then it causes problems in our nervous system. The disease causes three main problems. It either affects the optic nerve, so the, the nerve behind the eye, which causes you to see, and there it causes loss of vision or even blindness. It can affect your spinal cord, and if it affects your spine, it can affect the function of your bladder, your bowel, it can affect your legs and your arms functioning. And the third place it can affect is your brain more widely, often called encephalitis, or in this context, often called acute disseminated encephalomyelitis, a condition where people are confused, um, often, often have a reduced um, conscious level and can be comatosed. Up until the age of four, Abby was the most lively and confident child that you could ever meet. She loved socialising, she loved being outdoors, she loved to do cartwheels. We would be walking through a shop and she would be cartwheeling the whole way through. When Abby was four, she had encephalomyelitis, which is a brain inflammation disease that's caused from a viral infection. And then when Abby was eight, her vision began to deteriorate. So I took her to the local wire hospital and the consultant said that she had damage on her optic nerves and he registered her as partially sighted. I got in contact with her consultant at Great Ormond Street and they did some tests and discovered she has MOG antibody disease. Since diagnosis, Abby's had multiple relapses. She's had optic neuritis, seizures, mobility problems. She's had loss of sensation down one side of her body. She's now severely sight impaired and she's registered blind. Life's dealt her a really tough hand. It's completely changed her psychologically. She suffers with low confidence, anxiety, panic attacks. And as a mum, all you want to do is protect your children. And I find it hard that this is completely out of my control and there's nothing that I can do to fix it. That's what I find really tough. Our son's only had the one attack, so he's in the fortunate position of not needing to go on to a long-term medication. But imagine having some science to back up that decision not to go on to preventative. It would feel an awful lot less like playing Russian roulette, and it would give us incredible peace of mind. Erin had her first attack just before she was six. She literally woke up completely blind. We were all so scared. We had a lovely neurologist in the paediatric department at A&E who with his ophthalmologist friends treated her with IV steroids, but they hadn't heard of MOG then. Eventually she got the sight back after months and this affected her schooling. At 14, Erin had a second attack this time it took her sight and below her waist she was numb, finding it difficult to walk. The same neurologist had heard of MOG and she was treated again with IV steroids. Erin has been treated with preventatives but they have made her very sick and she's had to come off them. She's now not on anything. It's very stressful for her and us as a family, just waiting and watching for the next attack to happen. Thank you to everyone who is trying to help us with this. If treated early and recognised early, patients with MOG can have very good clinical outcomes. 
However, it's clear that a number of patients still have unmet medical needs and suffer disability despite treatment. Also, a number of patients have problems with relapses, unpredictable relapses in the, in the future. And these are the two elements we particularly want to try and address. like to say a massive thank you to these doctors for all of this research that they're putting in really changing the lives of these MOG patients so thank you. MOG is a really hard thing to go through it felt really embarrassing being different I'm glad I'm better now <laughs>